we can't thank you enough for coming, but I'll tell you what, you'll leave the ballroom tonight with a smile on your face. Absolutely. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, he's an old friend of ours, and he's been uh, with a couple TV stations in Cedar Rapids, and he says he's retired, but I don't think so. Let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen, for Scott Sanborn. Thank you, Big Al. How you doing, everybody? I said, how you doing, everybody? I hope you're in for a good time tonight because that's exactly what we're going to do here with the Mama organization, induct some very fine musicians into the Mama Hall of Fame. A uh, little bit about this venue. Do you know that this used to be a school? How many of you knew that? You know, it used to be a school. Next door, it was built in 1918. And this section used to be a gymnasium. And then in the 60s, they converted it to what it is tonight, the Ponderosa Hall and Ballroom. And we are so pleased. Thank you so much to the owners for letting us come out here and making this a special night for all of the inductees. I want to talk a little bit about the organization that Al is president of, the Midwest All Music Association. The mission of course, is to recognize and honor the people and places that have had a big impact on music in the state of Iowa. Mama Hall of Fame LLC was formed to preserve the history of music as well as to ensure that music has continued to support in its future. The goal is to raise public awareness and support of musical excellence through concerts and performances and special events. The organization provides the youth of Iowa a format to showcase their talent and further their musical careers. They provide financial support and resources to youth music programs in high schools, in middle schools, in the communities where Mama Hall of Fame LLC events are held. They've established a program to provide refurbished used musical instruments to music booster organizations. They recognize the achievements of the outstanding people and significant places impacting all genres of music in Iowa and throughout the Midwest. They honor the musicians, promoters, booking agents, DJs, conductors, and radio personnel who embody the music scene. Ballrooms, like this one, venues and radio stations that provide a forum for the music to be expressed will be recognized as well. Any person or place that has contributed significantly to the Iowa music scene will be considered for induction into the Mama Hall of Fame. So if you have an idea or a nomination, see one of the people dressed in these shirts and they'll make sure they take the information down. They'll do some research and see if we can't get them inducted into next year's Hall of Fame ceremony. We have so many people to thank, uh, sponsors and people that help this organization promote music and to keep its posterity open to future musicians. We'd like to thank Justin Roberts from WMT Radio and The Monk Shot on KCRG TV. Both of them have helped promote this uh, event tonight. Also, Diana Nolan. She is a singer with the Cedar Rapids Gazette, and she is the editor of Hoopla, and she helped promote this event. The Waterloo Courier newspaper, Russ and Tidbits. Also, the Guttenberg Press newspaper, Jane and Sheila, thank you very much. The Decora newspaper, Rapids Reproduction pro, uh, promoted and helped uh, put together the poster that helped promote this. And we have more to say about that poster coming up a little bit later. Also, Mount Vernon's newspaper, the Ponderosa Ballroom, of course. Connie and Paul, thank you so much for hosting this shindig tonight. And Bob at KDEC Radio in Decora. Thank you, Radio Bob. Special thanks to our sponsors, Tipton Electric Motors, Tom and Margo Y. Thank you, Tom and Margo. They just got here. Also, Viridian Credit Union, Jennifer Roberts, made that sponsorship happen. And Aces and Eight Saloon, Michael Flack, thank you. You need to frequent that venue. I'm telling you, that's where you can see the gamblers every Saturday afternoon. Mama has a lot of helpers. You know, Mama can't do it on her own, you know. Although Mama tried. Sound familiar, Mike? Mama tried. Mama tried. Joyce Rublak, 
on the Monmouth Board of Advisors. Doug Kempel also serves as a board advisor. Gene and Phyllis Vineyard, who are here, they are always at these events. They are board advisors. Ken and Darla Patchton are here. Jerry Best, Chad Johnson's here. Dan Rudin. Dick Cole, he has historic photographs over here we'll talk more about in a moment. Also, Kristen Miller is our new member on the board of directors. And then this young teenager right here, Al Hunsinger. Let's give it up for Al. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the volunteers that make this possible. Now, we'd like to introduce, I hope the Mama Board of Directors can step right up here so they can get their due recognition. Let's bring up Gene and Phyllis Vineyard. Where's Gene and Phyllis? Come on up here. Step right up. Just stand right here in front of the stage so everybody can get a good look at these folks. These folks are here all the time. You see them selling tickets. They're out promoting events. They're here to support this organization. Uh, also, Joyce Rublak. Is Joyce here yet? 6.30 she'll be here. Okay, you can't miss Joyce. She's always on the dance floor. She's at the flea market, right? Okay. Uh, so, and, and Doug Kempel, where's Doug? Doug, come on up here, Doug. Come on up here. Look at that. Stand right here in front of the stage, will you? You can stand right here in front of the stage. And now we have members of the board of directors I'd like to join. Dick Cole, step right up, Dick. Come on, Dick. Chad Johnson. All these folks volunteer their time to serve on the board of directors and make these things happen. Dan Fruden, Dan Rudin, rather. Ken Paxton. Come on up, Ken. I know Steve Dickers just got, got here from, from the fine metropolis of Guttenberg. Steve Henning, Jerry Best, some of the members couldn't be here tonight. Richie Lee, Tom Golden, enjoying the sunshine in Florida. Had a commitment, couldn't be here. Uh, Kristen Miller, is Kristen, Kristen couldn't make it? She's the new, she's the new member of the board, and of course, our our young teenager here, Al Hunsinger, on the board. Let's give these folks a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do, and we're going to bring some of them up here a little bit later on because some of these members are being inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight. Did you get your programs? Because members of the band that will be performing, bands that will be performing here tonight, will have, they have autograph sessions a little bit later on, okay? And they'll be signing memorabilia. I know Johnny Rogers is here and he's got CDs he's gonna be signing. Hey, Johnny! Johnny's here. Hey, Johnny, good to see you, man. Thanks for coming, we appreciate it. Where do you see his show a little bit later on? It's gonna be kick ass. All right, are we ready to do this? We would like each member who's being inducted into Mama's Hall of Fame to come up here center stage so Al can uh, hand you your well-deserved award. Where's Dale Thomas? You can come up either way, Dale. I know that these folks need no introduction, but I'm gonna give them one anyway. Dale bought his first six-string steel guitar at the age of 12 and immediately joined the Rainbow Rangers, a group of 18 to 20-year-olds from Adalissa, Iowa. He played with them until he was a senior in high school in 1956. He then formed the Bandera Boys, a group of local boys, Don Thomas, also Larry Fountain, Dwayne Stepanek, and soon added his buddy Al Hunsinger and Keith Reed. Bob Langhurst replaced Aponic after a year or so, and the Bandera Boys were very successful in the Midwest. This success continued with other talented musicians until 1964. Dale and many of the bands were students at the University of Iowa. The Dale Thomas Band evolved onto the TV show and continued nonstop with various talented musicians, too numerous to name here, until December 2018, after 68 years of professional playing. 
Dale's main musical love is the pedal steel guitar, the instrument that has propelled him to perform nationally at steel guitar shows. The 68-year career included recording for Dot Records, backing many national recording artists as they performed in the Midwest and producing his own CDs in the last 20 years. These CDs showcase Dale's vocals, steel guitar, arranging and versatility in the traditional country and western swing music. Dale Thomas has left quite an impact on the Iowa music scene, and with that in mind, we are pleased to welcome him as a 2019 inductee to the Midwest All Music Association Hall of Fame, Dale Thomas. Is Barefoot Becky here yet? Do we want to? Do you know what? They're actually performing today at Oktoberfest in a manhunt. And I know they're coming, so maybe we just hold off, put them off. Okay, we'll just put them near the end of the list. Give them time to get here. Members of Band Joy, where are you? Come on up! Band Joy! For nearly 20 years, Band Joy has been playing everything from classic bluegrass and gospel songs to originals and lively instrumentals. Harmony singing is an important part of Banjo's repertoire, and the top-notch instrumental talents of the group are well-known and respected throughout the Midwest and beyond. Banjo, a singer and songwriter, Bob Black, has been performing for 54 years. And I gotta mention this. Okay, how many of you got to see Ken Burns' documentary, Country Music, on PBS? He's in the documentary with Bill Monroe. He played with Bill Monroe for 19 years, ladies and gentlemen. A veteran of Bill Monroe's Bluegrass Boys. He's written his award-winning book about his experience of a father of bluegrass. It's entitled, Come Hither and Go Yonder. He was the recipient of the 2002 Iowa Traditional Arts Award and was inducted into the Iowa Bluegrass Hall of Fame in 2014. He has performed worldwide and recorded with John Hartford, Bill Monroe, Ricky Skaggs, Emmylou Harris, Rhonda Vincent, and many others. His unique banjo style and singing can be heard on over 45 different albums. Amazing. Christy Black. Christy Black has been writing and performing music for over 20 years. Her sweet to the heart vocals and traditional style guitar playing make her the favorite of audiences and fellow musicians alike. Mark Wilson, Banjo's talented lead guitarist, has been playing and singing all of his adult life. He's an accomplished songwriter with a style that is distinctive, personalized, and engaging. Paul Roberts, bass player with Banjo, has been playing bluegrass since 1978. In addition to bass, he plays banjo and guitar and is a singer-songwriter. And Joy Ward, Van Joy's outstanding fiddler, has been playing and singing since a very early age. She has a beautiful, expressive singing voice and has appeared on 18 different albums, ranging from Celtic and folk to cowboy and bluegrass. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Van Joy for their 2019 Midwest All Music Association Hall of Fame induction. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. I don't know if this is smart or not, but our next inductees actually let me play with them a couple of times, and it's a joy to do that. Gamblers, come on up here. Michael John Flack formed the Gamblers Band in 1977 to accommodate his Nashville career, traveling extensively throughout the United States doing shows and club dates until Mike left the excessive traveling tour in 1983. Always showcasing the classic country sounds of his youth, he is now very proud of his current membership. Dennis Detweiler on steel guitar, Willie Morris on lead, Carlos Ferro on fiddle, and the amazing female rhythm section of Gene Morrissey and bass guitar and Dusty on drums. Having at last a club to call home, absolutely. You can now catch the Gamblers, now found regularly at Aces and Eight Saloon in Cedar Rapids. 
still playing dances and special dates around the state. This classic country and rock and roll style is a crowd-pleasing show and an experience of great sounds from the past. We are very honored to induct into the 2019 class of the Midwest All Music Association, the Gamblers. Congratulations. We've got an autograph session coming up too, and you can get your you can get your program signed by all of these. As a matter of fact, we have one poster left, a full color poster. We hope to get all of the participants here tonight to sign it. We'll auction it off to benefit Mama so they can put that money back into the schools to help our youth. What memories the Memory Brothers have made through the years, huh? Where's Doug Kempel? Members of the Memory Brothers. Is Doug here? Doug's got to be here, right? Come on up, boys. Doug Kempel was born in West Union, Iowa. Yeehaw! He's an American musician, producer, and songwriter. In 1966, at the age of 15, he joined the Iowa rock and roll band The Runaways as the keyboardist. Their sole single release, My Baby Left Me, in 1966 on the Cooley label, has been included on the compilation CD Psychedelic States as an archetypical example of the garage band genre. In 1968, the band changed its name to The Rubber Band. Kempel left the band in 1970 to form the Memory Brothers. Kempel studied pre-med at the University of Iowa from 68 to 71, and in 72, he switched majors to music and graduated in 1974 with a degree in music theory and composition. He was signed by Chart Records in Nashville, Tennessee in 1974, and between then and 1980, he released three singles, Dream River, April Lee, Rock on and on and on, as well as a solo album saying goodbye. In 1980, he built Bird on Fire Recording Studio in West Union, and there recorded 15 original albums with the Memory Brothers, including Time and Distance, Tight Rope, Waiting for Your Love, and For Always. As a producer, Kempel also worked with both Nikki Hassman and Emily West in the 80s and 90s, helping them secure recording contracts. Hashman was signed with the Christian group Avalon and went on to win several double awards and West won second place in America's Got Talent, season nine. Released the duet Blue Sky with Keith Urban in 2010 and has been featured on numerous TV programs, Celebrity Apprentice and Body of Proof, just a couple. In September of 2010, Kempel was inducted into the Iowa Rock and Roll Music Association Hall of Fame as an original member of the Rubber Band. And on September 1st, 2013, he was again inducted into the Iowa Rock and Roll Music Association Hall of Fame as the founding member of the Memory Brothers. For their talent and impact on the music industry, Memory Brothers have been selected for the Midwest All Music Association Hall of Fame for 2019. Congratulations. Hey Johnny, rock and roll up here, bud. Come on up here. Johnny Rogers, ladies and gentlemen, was born to Rocky and Rose Rogers in the southern states of Kentucky and Tennessee. Now they tell me you had no interest in playing music at all until what? You until until you saw Buddy Holly. You heard Buddy Holly. You heard Buddy Holly, and that kind of changed his tune, so to speak. Changed his life. The song was Rave On, right? He said it was like someone or something turned a switch on inside of him. From that moment on, he knew what he wanted to be in life, and that was somebody like Buddy. The Johnny Rogers Show, the history of rock and roll, is the story of Buddy and beyond. Johnny Rogers is in the business of bringing yesteryear's music and history of rock and roll to life. His music has the simplicity of Buddy Holly and the soul of Hank Williams and the funk of Prince. 
His stage presence echoes the king of rock and roll, and guitar licks blend the skills of Chet Atkins and Jimi Hendrix. Johnny Rogers captures the infectious spirit, freewheeling excitement, and thrilling sounds of a singular moment with his extraordinary talent and his creative prime for all shows that raise the roof, knock your bobby socks off, and bring you back to your youth. Congratulations to Johnny Rogers on his induction with the Midwest All Music Association Hall of Fame Class of 2019. Let's give a round of applause to all of our musicians who are making the Hall of Fame even richer with their appearances here tonight. Now, we've got some very special people in the program, too. The Mama couldn't do what it does without the help of these folks. Tom and Margot Wise, step right up. I met these folks in Tipton, and they are so generous with their time. I think they're here. Here they are. Tom and Margo are currently living and working in Tipton. They enjoy spending their free time with their children and grandkids, dancing, traveling, watching NASCAR, attending sporting events. They own and operate Tipton Electric Motors, which is a family-owned business originally started in 1957 by Margo's parents. Music has always played a key role through both of their lives. They were both involved in band throughout school, sang in the church choir, sung Christmas carols every year at the nursing homes, and those in need of a little holiday cheer. Tom and Margo also donate their time and money to help support the Tipton High School Fine Arts and have chaperoned five trips to the East Coast for those high school students. Yeah, you can applaud that. That's cool. In January 2006, Tom and Margo began taking dance lessons in preparation for their son's upcoming wedding. By now, they know several different dance moves. You like swing, though, don't you? You love swing. You can't go to a mama event and not find this couple out on the dance floor. They do such a great job. Through the mama organization, Tom and Margo have met many new friends on and off the dance floor. They proudly help support mama by sponsoring dancers throughout the year and by informing people of bands playing in the eastern Iowa area. It's not uncommon for people to call Margo at work or stop Tom and Margo on the street asking them about upcoming events. They're great friends to the mama organization. The Midwest All Music Association extremely pleased to induct Tom and Margo Y of Tipton the Electric Motors into the Hall of Fame with the class of 2019. Congratulations. Here's another beautiful couple. We caught them up here earlier. Come on back up here. Now you have to come up on stage, Gene. Gene and Phyllis Vineyard of Kelowna, Iowa. You do have your horse and buggy tied up out here, don't you? Right. They just celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary a couple of years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Gene had worked 43 years for the U.S. Postal Service, and Phyllis had worked as a beautician for 60 years. The two of them met at a roller rink in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and the rest, as they say, is history. They have three kids, Gene, Terry, and Tracy, and six grandchildren. Gene and Al Hunsinger became friends back in 1969 when both had joined the Iowa City Officials Organization. They partnered in 1972, and this year, Gene and Al completed 50 years of officiating high school basketball. The Vineyards became even closer friends with Hunsinger when they were selected to be regional advisors for the Midwest All Music Association in 2014. You may have seen them selling tickets for events and dances that Mama puts on every year. Because of their dedication and support for Mama, we're proud to welcome Gene and Phyllis as inductees into Mama's Class of 19, 2019 Hall of Fame. Congratulations. <laughs> We have one left. I told you a little bit about this place, originally built as a school in, what, 1918? Oh, I think maybe. 
but we're going to duck to the Lakeside Ballroom. I got to tell you a little bit about the Lakeside Ballroom. You know, we have historic ballrooms throughout Iowa, but this place is kind of special. Lakeside was built in 1927 in Guttenberg, Iowa. It was a popular establishment during the Prohibition era. The structure was erected at a cost of $27,000. The dance floor was built with one and a quarter inch hardwood maple on springs so people wouldn't get tired of dancing. I love this. They painted Lakeside in large letters on the roof of the building for use for aerial dead recognizing navigation, the only method of navigation at the time. Charles Lindbergh and other pioneer aviators used Lakeside as a checkpoint flying from Minneapolis to Chicago to St. Louis. In 1935, Del Morley and Ed Eberhard purchased the ballroom. And I gotta tell you, just a few of the artists who performed at the Lakeside Ballroom. The Everly Brothers in the 50s, big bands like Jan Garber, Russ Morgan, Dick Jurgens, Eddie Howard, Griff Williams, Leo Piper, they all played underneath the hanging lights of Lakeside. The Diamonds played there. We were at that show, weren't we? We presented that show. That was great. Lakeside has also had entertainers like Lawrence Welk, Leo Grieco and his pioneers, Johnny Kettleson, Johnny Cash, Brenda Lee, Tommy Overstreet, Guy Lombardo, Herman's Hermans, Hank Thompson, Mickey Gilly, The Grassroots, Tommy James and the Shondells, Head East, Willie Nelson, and Ray Price all played the Lakeside Ballroom. Lakeside was nearly lost in the flood of 1965 when there was five feet of water covering the dance floor. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers loaded it with dynamite for demolition in case it floated into the lock and dam. The ballroom has held over 1,500 people for dances numerous times over the years, with some bands drawing 2,000 people. In 2006, Lakeside was purchased by Lakeside Preservation Committee, LLC. Lakeside is currently owned by Jeff and Carrie Friedland and Ross and Mary Abbott. Their goal is to restore the building back to a near original condition and bring back the lifestyle of its yesteryears. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff and Carrie Friedland are here tonight. Come on up. They have done such great work and continue to hold dances at the Lakeside Ballroom. Jeff and Carrie Friedland, the owners of Lakeside, we induct you and Lakeside into the MAMA 2019 Class Hall of Fame. Congratulations. By the way, Lakeside is on the National Register of Historic Places. Congratulations. How about a round of applause for all of our inductees here tonight? Thank you for what you do. We're going to take a short break. Yeah, you don't have to listen to me much anymore. We're going to do autographs at the artist table, so we'll ask the artist to come on over here and sign the programs. Everybody can get uh, souvenir autograph copies of their uh, programs here tonight. We are also have a full color poster for tonight that we'll auction off a little bit later. We'll get all of the artists to sign in as well. And the money raised from that will go right back into Mama so we can get it back into the schools to help our youth. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We're going to rock and roll this place. Thank you.